All information provided is being collected pursuant to the Planning Act and be used for the purpose of garnering your import, input to respond to inquiries and to be notified of future meetings and is considered public information. This meeting is now called to order. Okay, you tell me what. Um, this morning, the Committee of Adjustment will be dealing with a variety of planning applications. The public hearing serves two purposes. First, to present to the committee and the public the details and background of the proposed applications. And second, to receive comments from the public and agencies before a decision is made. If you wish to be notified of a decision of the Committee of Adjustment, you must have a written request either by email or regular mail to the Township of Lake of Bays, Dwight, Ontario, P0H1AO. Are there any additions to the agenda? Moved by Councillor LaCroix, seconded by Councillor Papard, be resolved the Committee of Adjustment hereby constitutes itself for the purpose of hearing matters in accordance with the Planning Act, namely minor variances and consents. Council, for question, all those in favor. Thank you. Thank you. So this morning I will read the land acknowledgement statement. We recognize, we gather on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee nations, acknowledging we are settlers here. We make our homes today on land bound by Treaty 13. It is through the long stewardship over thousands of years and the four sacrifices of the original inhabitants that we're able to make this beautiful place our home. The ongoing stewardship of the environment is a legacy we must strive to treasure and preserve. We invite everyone to investigate the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee and the treaties that still bind all of us so that we may share this land in honor and respect, learning from one another and listening to their story so we may better grow together because it is our collective history. Miigwech. Um, do any of my fellow council committee members wish to declare any pecuniary interest relating to any of the files being heard and state the nature thereof? Councillors? Not for this section, okay. Um, next up, I have the consent agenda. Items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and enacted in one motion. However, any committee member may request one or more items be removed from the consent agenda for separate discussion and door action. Each and every matter of business contained in the consent agenda is re recorded separately in the minutes of the meeting. Now, I had no one ask for anything to be pulled today, so thank you for that. All right, thank you. Moved by Councillor Brooks, seconded by Councillor Anderson, whereas the Committee of Adjustment of the Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bays reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions be resolved, the committee approve and adopt the recommendations contained in the consent agenda dated May 30th, 2023 and direct staff to proceed with all the necessary administrative actions. Council for the question, all those in favor. Thank you, it's carried. Are there any delegations? Okay, next up under reports and bylaws, if you wish to speak to an application, you'll be required to use the meeting controls to raise your hand and you'll be called by name to speak. Please clearly state your name and address and explain your views on the application being presented by the applicant. Please note your comments will be recorded. Those that have registered for the meeting by providing a mailing or email address and those that have spoken or provided written comments will be added to the mailing list to receive a copy of the decision. Under minor variances, we have consents B4143 21LB applicants Borden, James Boothby Estate, and this will be Esther. Good morning, Esther, and welcome. Take it away whenever you're ready. Good morning. Okay. The purpose of the, these applications are to create three new parcels of land for residential purposes, having frontage on and access from Highway 35, a year round maintained provincial road. Two rights of way are also proposed to provide access to the new lots as well as the retained parcel. Sorry. There we go, thank you. All right. Staff identified several natural constraints affecting this property, including 
the northern portion being within the influence area of a non-operating, non-municipal waste disposal site, an authorized aggregate site adjacent to the north lot line, portions characterized by steep slopes, areas of low, moderate, and high wildland fire hazard risk, Lake of Bay's heritage area along the Oxtongue River corridor and a locally significant wetland across the northern portion. As the proposed development is outside the influence area of the waste disposal site and beyond the boundaries of the aggregate site, staff concluded that neither a D4 assessment nor a compatibility assessment was required. To address the remaining identified constraints, the applicant's agent retained Riverstone Environmental to conduct a scoped environmental impact study and a wildland fire assessment of the subject property. Staff are not opposed to the creation of the lots as proposed and the two rights of way. As a condition of consent, staff recommend that a zoning bylaw amendment application be required to rezone Severed lots one and two, which you can see in that slide, are just to the north, the northern two lots, to rural residential with an exception, to identify the restrictions related to the wetlands and associated buffers identified in the EIS. The rural residential zone requires a minimum lot area of two hectares with 152 meters of frontage on a year round maintained road. Both severed lots one and two would meet these requirements. For severed lot three, to rezone to waterfront residential with an exception zone to recognize and identify development restrictions identified in the environmental impact study. Severed lot three meets the waterfront residential zone required minimum lot area of 0 0.4 hectares with minimum water frontage of 120 meters along a narrow waterway. The retained lot will be rezoned to Rural 1 with an exception to implement the recommendations of the EIS while maintaining the Waterfront Environmental Protection designation along the Oxtongue River. In addition, staff recommend that the owner enter into a Section 5126 agreement to implement the recommendations in both the Environmental Impact Study and Wildland Fire Assessment prepared for these applications. Here you can see some photos of the currently vacant property along Highway 35. As the proposed severed and retained lots appear to be of sufficient size and frontage and are appropriately configured for the residential development proposed, staff are of the opinion that there will be an appropriate location for a building envelope on these lots and that the resulting properties are in character with the area in which they are located. The applicant's agent pre-consulted with staff and provided a proposal that took staff's comments into consideration prior to submitting these applications. Staff are of the opinion that the creation of three severed lots and one retained is consistent with the 2020 provincial policy statement and generally conforms to both the district and township official plans, provided that the severed and retained lands be rezoned and that the recommendations in the technical reports prepared to assess the natural constraints on the property are addressed through the rezoning section 5126 agreement and any subsequent approvals. Staff therefore have no concerns with the approvals of application B41 to 4321 LOB subject to the recommendations outlined in this report. If anyone has any questions regarding the application, we'll be happy to answer them. The applicant and um, the applicant's agent are both present in this morning if you have any specific questions for them. Esther, thank you very much for the report. Council, questions for Esther? Councilor Tapley. Thank you, <clears throat> Mayor Glover. Um, Esther, have they identified a building envelope on lot three? Yes, they have. It's not, it's not shown in the illustrated um, slide, however. It, Subsequent? Where is it? <clears throat> Thank you, Mary Glover. It is identified in the environmental impact study, um, which is encapsulated in the rezoning in the section 51. So it's well back from the wetland area and the heritage area. 
it has addressed all of those constraints. Okay. Yeah. Further questions, Council Anderson. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lever. Um, this is in reference to um, the building department question about hydro lines and and um, specific site for septic and house. And so I'm wondering uh, some clarity on that. And I, I, again, for my education, how far away do we have to be to put up a building or septic system from a hydro line? Great questions. Who wants to take those? I see a smiling face. Oh, Steve Peace or who's Steve Watson? Mr. Watson, I assume you're on a camera. Morning, can you hear me? Uh, yep, now we can see you too. Welcome, oh, you go ahead. Good morning. Uh, um, it's regulated by um, Hydro One and Ontario Building Code. It all depends on the voltage of the lines. Um, usually it's around 4.5 meters from the swing of the line. So we usually add another one meter to it. So 5.5 meters on average. If it's a lower voltage, then it could be less, but I do think it'd be the higher of the two. Is that sufficient, Councilor Anderson? Yes, I think I think thanks, Mark. Further questions, okay, Councillor uh, Lacroix. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This might be before the agent more than staff. I just wondered why we there's a right of way between lot one and two instead of an entrance. Uh, it, I was assuming highway or the highways wouldn't allow multi entrances. Did you want to take that? Through you, Mayor Glover, um, and. John Gallagher may be able to speak to this better as well, but it's my understanding that to keep the entrances limited, that the right of way will allow an entrance to both severed lot one and two um, with, with just the one entrance off the highway. Good. Further questions for Esther? Not seeing any. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Okay, I'd last. Uh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Gallagher. Come forward, please. Name and address for the record. Be sure your microphone is on. And whenever you're ready. Good morning, Your Worship, uh, members of Council, John P. Gallagher, John P. Gallagher and Associates. And I'm here today with the owner of the property, uh, Lori Boothby, and Chuck's here as well. I think Esther has uh, provided a good outline of the application. As she had stated, we've been working uh, on this application for quite some time with uh, staff in order to address the environmental concerns that they felt needed addressing. In that regard, uh, Riverstone Environmental was hired to look at uh, the wetlands, the slopes on the site, the heritage area down along the ox tongue, as well, they were also retained to do with the uh, wildland fire uh, report. In review of the um, proposal, we basically have about 150 acres and we're creating three five acre parcels on it. The question was raised about the building envelope, which was I think an important uh, factor because when we look at the constraints that are on the property, and the recommendations uh, for buffers uh, from those constraints, such as wetlands or building off the hill or off the hydro corridor, we have identified a number of locations uh, for this. And they're very specific. For example, on lot three, the building site is to the extreme far north of the uh, lot three. When we get to the top lot, uh, the building location is on the southern side because the Highway 35 drops off uh, from there. And this was another uh, purpose of uh, doing the joint rights of way to limit access and allow others to uh, come to a safe entrance point on the property. Staff have made, or first off, Staff support the application. Uh, the district has advised that the application conforms to the district official plan. I provided a, a planning justification report backing up uh, staff at both levels. The conditions that the staff have imposed on the applications are appropriate and they are the tools to 
ensure that development occurs in the areas that have been identified through the various studies. In that regard, uh, there will be a zoning amendment coming in. On top of that, uh, the requirement is also there for those uh, reports to be uh, attached as addendums to uh, 5126 agreement. And the purpose of those two processes is so that when someone comes in for the actual building permit on the uh, property, they will see those uh, recommendations and reports prior to closing their deal and designing where they're going to build their house. Um, like I say, I think it's a, it's a good plan for the site. It's very limited. There's uh, vegetation protection that will be on the balance of the lots given the uh, development permit requirements. Uh, we feel that uh, the application conforms to the um, district official plan, the local official plan. It provides three more housing opportunities in the town of Dwight, which I think are, you know, we see what's happening on uh, Lake of Bay's uh, lane there, or the Dwight Beach Road. Uh, there is uh, interest in this area and moving forward. And uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions, should you have any. If I can't answer them, Lori's here and she might help me out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions, counsel for Mr. Gallagher. Don't see any. Uh, is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak to this case? And is there anyone online wishes to pose a question? Okay. I have a resolution. Moved by Councillor Tappet, seconded by Councillor Pard. Where is the Committee of Adjustment of the Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bays hereby receives a staff report, consent applications B41 43 21 LOB Board and James Booth the Estate, Part Lots 7 and 8, Concession 7 and 8, Franklin Ward Roll Number 010 011 08000, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicant has submitted consent applications B41 43 21 LOB to create Three new parcels of land for residential purposes having frontages and access on Highway 35, a year round maintained provincial road with two right of ways. Be it resolved that consent applications B41 43 21 LOB, Borden, James Booth, the estate be approved subject to the provisional decisions attached to the staff report. Questions, Council? All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Next up, Esther again, B0423 LB applicants, Alessandro Savaldi and Amanda Kindrad. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. The purpose of this application is to create one new parcel of land for residential purposes, having frontage on both Point Ideal Road and Port Cunnington Road. A year round publicly made, both year round publicly maintained roads. Staff are not opposed to the creation of the new lot as proposed. As a condition of consent, staff recommend that a subsequent zoning bylaw amendment application be required. Whoops. Move that. Thank you. Excuse me. As a condition of consent, staff recommend that a subsequent zoning bylaw amendment application be required to rezone the retained and severed lands to rural residential to address insufficient lot area. In addition, the applicants will be required to conduct a D4 assessment to ensure no potential negative impacts exist from the influence of a non-operational waste disposal site. The District of Muskoka provided comments and explained that Port Cunnington Road Muskoka Road 22 is considered to be a controlled access highway. The district's engineering and public works has advised that all access to the proposed severed lot shall be from the township lot road, that being Point Ideal Road. The township public works have noted that a suitable entrance off Point Ideal Road would be feasible. In these photos shown, you can see um, some views of the vacant lot and uh, uh, a shot of the re the house that is currently on the retained property. 
staff are of the opinion that there will be an appropriate location for a building envelope on the proposed severed lot and that the resulting properties are in character with the area in which they are located. Staff are of the opinion that the application is consistent with the 2020 provincial policy statement, generally conforms to the district and township official plans, and approval of such would not contravene the comprehensive zoning bylaw provided the application incorporates the recommended conditions listed in the provisional decision. Therefore, staff have no concerns with the approval of application B0423 LOB subject to the recommendations outlined in this report. Again, if anyone has any questions, we'd be glad to entertain them. Also, the applicants are both present here this morning um, if you have any specific questions for them. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Questions, Council, for Esther on this file? Not seeing any. Would the applicant or someone like to come forward if they wish? Not seeing any. That's okay. Um, is there anyone in the public wishes to speak to this file here or online? Okay, then. I have moved by Councillor Goddard, second by Councillor Bard, whereas the Committee of Adjustment of the Corporation of the Township of Lake Bay is hereby receives a staff report, consent application B0423 LV Savaldi, Kindrat, 1033 Point Ideal Road, Dwight, roll number 4427-010-017-02800, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicant has submitted consent application B0423 LV Savaldi, Kindrat, to create one new parcel of land for residential purposes, having frontage on Point Ideal Road and Port Cunnington Road year-round maintained roads. Be a result that consent application B0423 LV Savaldi, Kindrat, be approved. Subject to the provisional decision attached to the staff report. Council for the question. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Next up, I have B19 2023 LB applicants Stephen and Holly Barnstable. And this is Helena. Good morning, Helena, whenever you're ready. Yes, good morning. All right, applications B19 and 20, 2023, are consent applications to create two new and one retained lot from a piece of land on Rat Bay in Lake of Bays, located at 1039 Silver Birch Lane. Staff are generally supportive of these applications. The subject property is comprised of approximately 0.33 hectares or 0.81 acres with 140.4 meters of frontage on Lake of Bays. The proposed severed lots are shown here outlined on this slide in red. The retained lot is in green. So the center lot is the retained lot here. Proposed severed lot one would be comprised of 610 square meters in area with 30.5 meters of frontage. Proposed severed lot two would be 1,580 square meters with 45 meters of water frontage. The retained lot would be 1,080 square meters of area with approximately 65 meters of water frontage. The property is currently designated as waterfront residential. A concurrent bylaw amendment application has been submitted to redesignate the property to waterfront open space with a special exception to better define the use of the subject lands. Staff recommend that the bylaw amendment be made a condition of consent. The applications seek to clarify ownership and legal rights on the subject property. Currently, the property is under the name of one owner and has a blanket easement over it in favor of six other nearby property owners. A blanket easement is an easement that encumbers an entire property as opposed to applying to a specific part on a property such as a driveway. Some history of this property is that it was created as a block on a plan of subdivision that was approved in the 1970s. Historically, and not uncommonly, blocks on plans of subdivisions in waterfront areas throughout Muskoka were intended to be communal open space type properties for lots that were created without water frontage to have access to the lake. It is generally not the intent that these subdivision blocks be sold into private ownership. However, most of the time, this is what happens, which often results in confusion over property rights and neighbor disputes. The subject application reflects an effort made by the current property owner with the consent of all those property owners that have rights over the property to improve this situation. 
Staff visited the subject lands on May 11th to walk the property firsthand. The property is developed with a boathouse and two separate docks. There is one driveway leading from Silver Birch Lane to the shoreline. Staff confirmed steep slopes present on the subject lands. Staff recommend that the slopes be addressed in a future development permit as dictated through the bylaw amendment. There was a fish habitat, there was fish habitat noted along the frontage of the subject property at the pre-consultation stage. The applicant has provided a favorable fish habitat assessment with recommended mitigation measures. Staff recommend that these mitigation measures be incorporated into the proposed bylaw amendment for the subject lands. Staff have not received any letters of objection from the public. However, I believe there may be several property owners present online or in council chambers who may wanna to speak to the application. In conclusion, staff recommend approval of the application as it's the opinion of staff that it seeks to improve upon an existing situation. Staff have no concerns with the approval of the applications provided the conditions listed in the provisional decisions attached to the staff report are imposed. I'm available to answer any questions and I believe that the agent is present as well. Thank you, Helena. Questions for Helena Council, Council Tab. Thank you, Mayor Parker. Helena, uh, separate lot one and the retained lot, would they not merge the two owned by the same people? Helena? Uh, thanks for your question. So in the process, in the lot creation process, Councillor, they get transferred into the name of somebody else. So once a property is created by consent, it's once a consent, always a consent is the general rule in the Planning Act. So it won't remerge with the property that it was just severed from. Council, further questions for Helena? Is that a question? Okay, the then it's not. Hearing, I'd be interested in hearing the other um, cottagers that use this lot, but they were all in favor of this because I've been down there before. A lot of trouble there <laughs> in the past. In the past. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, is um, the agent Graham Huzinga with Tulloch here today? Oh, online. You'd like to come forward, sir? Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Your Worship, members of the committee. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, name and address for the record, please, and then take it away. Certainly. Uh, my name is Graham Heisinger, land use planner with Tullock Engineering, 80 Main Street West, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H1W9. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to committee about this uh, application this morning. I think uh, Helena did a good job summarizing uh, the nature of the proposal. And I'd like to thank staff for their diligent work on reviewing this proposal. It's it's certainly not your run-of-the-mill consent, and uh, there are a lot of moving parts involved here. So I, I definitely appreciate the, the work staff have put into this one. Um, as mentioned in the staff report, this is uh, an effort on the part of basically the entire community to address these uh, uh, you know ongoing questions about ownership and rights of access to this piece of property. As Helena mentioned, it was created as a block intended to serve multiple properties and provide access to the water uh, when the subdivision was created. Of course, the nature of our land use uh, title system in Ontario states that, you know, somebody has to end up owning this property and, uh, you know, whether it was the developer holding on to it forever or eventually got transferred into private ownership, as was the case here, um, you know, issues like this can, can arise. So, you know, barring any uh, more drastic means of addressing this, such as creating a condominium corporation, which I don't think is necessary in this case, um, this is essentially the, the most amenable means of, of addressing these, uh, these questions of access and, and use that have been ongoing at this property and kind of resolving those uh, in a way that all parties have been uh, party to, all these property owners in the nearby area have um, been party to these discussions and there are agreements of purchase and sale that were provided to the township um, kind of prepared ahead of time uh, conditional on this consent and rezoning process going through that will clarify those rights further and essentially confirm that all the parties involved are satisfied with the outcome uh, this has been a multi-year process and uh, Stephen and Holly Barnstaple along with all the other property owners in the area I'm sure are eager to uh, to see a resolution here to this 
a long process and enjoy the uh, ongoing access to the water that this will afford them. Um, as Helena mentioned, we do have a concurrent uh, development permit amendment application in with the township and that vehicle can be used to both uh, redesignate the subject property from a waterfront residential use, which uh, would not be appropriate given the sizes of the, the lots that we're proposing here to a waterfront open space use, which is more in keeping of the intended use of the block when it was first created, as well as ensuring that no future residential development could occur on those properties uh, due to their limited size. Um, and also that uh, that application process can serve as a vehicle to uh, implement the recommendations of the EIS that was uh, prepared uh, respecting fish habitat and uh, measures for uh, ensuring that, they, that that habitat is not impacted. So I'm uh, I'm available to answer any questions uh, of a planning nature. I believe um, the property owners are here as well. And as staff mentioned, some other property owners involved in this process uh, might be here in person or online. Um, I believe the applicant solicitor, David Ryan, is also present to answer any more technical legal questions about uh, the preparation of these agreements of purchase and sale and all the various conditions about uh, merging the properties uh, through the land titles act for conveyance purposes and things of that nature so thank you again very much for your time this morning and uh, i'm available for any questions okay thank you for the report questions from council for graham not seeing any so i'm going to go next to uh the public who would like to speak to this does anyone want to speak to this file what all right Okay, so we have someone coming in by. Yeah. Okay, I've got Tom Petty. I don't see any. I can't read. Oh, I see in the bottom there. Good morning, sir. Name and address for the record, and then you may. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name's uh, Tom Petty. I'm the uh, resident, or I own the property at 1041 uh, Silver Birds Lane, which is adjacent to uh, this uh, severance. I'm specifically interested in the severance restrictions for lot number one, the lot that's been purchased by the Dunsmores. My understanding is that the uh, the applicant is restricted to putting a meandering path down to the water and the construction of a dock, and that there are no other um, there's no other ability to build anything else on the property. I'm specifically thinking of um, either a washroom or a shed or something like that. My understanding is that the restriction simply is the applicant can build a dock and access to that particular dock. Okay, uh, did we wanna take that? I see some nodding, go ahead, Helena. Through you, Mary Glover, thanks so much for your question, Mr. Petty. Um, to answer your question, yes, you're correct that the, that proposed severed lot one is restricted by the fish habitat assessment and the recommendations that were made as part of that study. Um, and they were restricted to a meandering walking path and a specific docking envelope. So that would be encompassed in the bylaw amendment and the site specific zoning that would apply to the property provided it's all applied for and approved. That, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, I have no objections then. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. Do we have a second? Andrew Russell and Cheryl Slater. Good morning, sir. Name and address for the record, and then you're on. Uh, good morning. It's Andrew Russell and my wife, Cheryl Slater, here. Our address is 1019 Silver Birch Lane. Um, we're the neighbors to the north of the subject properties, and we have a right of way easement over uh, severed lot number two in the proposal. Uh, we had very similar concerns to Mr. Petty uh, out of interest, and I think the answer, the same answer applies. 
the first question would be just to confirm, even though the depth of severed lot one is over 20 meters, I believe the open space rule and the restriction on development still applies to the, to the full depth of the property. Yeah. Through you, Mayor Glover, yes, that's correct. The same comments that I made about Severed Lot 1 would apply to Severed Lot 2 as well, and that the fish habitat assessment provides specific recommendations with respect to where development can be located, including a walking path and the width of said path and everything. So that would be encompassed through the site-specific zoning that would apply on the property. Thank, thank, thank you. Um, next question was just on the side setbacks. I believe the side setbacks are independent of the, the type of zoning, but just wanted to confirm that the side setbacks on, for example, the dock and the side setback, maybe even on the meandering path, might apply to the lot line and the projection of the lot line? Yep, and are we ready? Yep, through you, Mayor Glover. Yes, so the side yard setback would be 4.5 meters for the meandering walking path and the dock as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I suppose just the last question, we uh, we rely on the driveway across um, severed lot two to access our property. And so of course that relies on a right of way that I'm, I'm sure will persist. Um, but of course, intensifying that area by having several owners accessing through that one, um, that one point, uh, where we, which we we share access, is of course our our greatest concern. Um, the the current set of owners, I'm sure, will be will be lovely and will will get along fine. But of course, in future generations, this will be a, a point of concern for future um, owners. The um, so first question, we just want to make sure that the right of way persists, which I'm sure it does, and and inquire about whether there's any restrictions for parking cars at the beginning of that property, which is already graveled for the purposes of our driveway. Thank you. Go ahead, Helena. Through you, Mayor Glover. Thanks for your question. So to answer them in order, the right-of-way will continue to persist over severed lot two. So regardless of when a lot is created, anything that encumbers the parent property gets carried over in, in title. So you don't have to worry about that unless you were, of course, going to sign off on extinguishing that right-of-way, which doesn't sound like you are <laughs> planning on doing. <laughs> Um, secondly, about parking. Um, so the superintendent of public works is present. We don't allow parking on municipal roads. And the fish habitat assessment that was done recommended a pedestrian pathway only, not a vehicular pathway. So I'm not sure if that answers your question specifically with respect to parking, but generally no parking would be permitted on that particular proposed slot. Are we Thank good? You. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Uh, further questions? Anything from Council based on the last conversations? Now, is there anyone else in the audience wishes to speak to this file? Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate your input. Moved by Council LaCroix, seconded by Council Pard. Whereas the Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation of the Township Lake of Bay is hereby receives a staff report, consent applications B19-2023, LAB Barnstable, 1039 Silver Beach, Birch Lane, roll number 4427-010-005-06120, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicants have submitted consent applications B19-2023, LAB Barnstable to permit the creation of two new lots for waterfront access purposes. Be resolved that applications B19 2023 LV Barnstable be approved subject to the provisional decision attached to the staff report. Council, for the question, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you very much. Moved by Councillor Papard, seconded by Councillor LaCroix. Be resolved the Committee of Adjustment, the Corporation of the Township of Lincoln Bay is hereby adjourns at 9.41 a.m. to meet again on June 27, 2023 at 9 a.m. in a hybrid meeting setting. Council, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, there's nothing further. I declare the public meeting for Committee of Adjustment to be concluded. 
And we'll be moving into council for planning right away. We're good to go. We are now moving into Township Lake Base Council for planning matters meeting. The meeting is now being called to order. Is there any additions to the agenda? Yes, there is. Um, under reports and bylaws for Z3122 Delwitta, uh, there was a letter of concern received. Okay, with that addition, be it resolved, the Council for Planning Matters meeting agenda dated May 30th, 2023 be adopted as amended. And with the addition of reports and bylaws, Delwita, letter of concern, Lawrence. Council, for the question, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, I have a script. During this meeting, Council will be dealing with a variety of planning applications. Generally, the Planning Act requires that a public hearing be held before Council makes a decision on an application. The public hearing serves two purposes. First, to present to Council and the public the details and backgrounds of the proposed applications, and second, to receive comments from the public and agencies before a decision is made. In this regard, I'd like to read the following statement with respect to rezonings and or site-specific amendments to applicable bylaw. Under section 34, subsection 12, the council shall ensure that sufficient information and materials made available to enable the public to understand generally the zoning proposal that is being considered by the council. The staff report in each application is available on the township website, along with reports submitted in support of an application. Under section 34, subsection 14.5, council shall ensure that information is made available to the public regarding who's entitled to appeal. The applicant, a person or public body who before the bylaws passed made oral submission at a public meeting or written submissions to council or the minister may appeal to the local planning appeal tribunal not later than 20 days after the day of giving of notice is completed. If you wish to be notified by a of a decision by council for planning matters, you must make written requests either by regular mail or email to the Township of Lake of Bays, Dwight, Ontario, P0H1HO. I'd like to ask council, is there any uh, council members uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest relating to any of the files being heard and state the nature thereof? Council Taffy, I recognize you. 6A, I, Dalwita, creation of SDR by reason of employment and similar business. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We'll make note of it. Are there any delegations? Under the consent agenda, items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and enacted in one motion. However, any council member may request one or more items be removed from the consent agenda for separate uh, discussion or action. Each and every matter of business contained in the consent agenda is recorded separately in the minutes of the meeting. I've heard from no councillors. We're okay to go with this. Moved by Councillor Tappy, seconded by Councillor Picard. Whereas the Council of Corporation of Township of Lake of Bays reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions and bylaws, now therefore be resolved, the Mayor and Council approve and adopt recommendations containing the consent agenda dated May 30th, 2023, and direct staff to proceed with all the necessary administrative actions. Council for the question. All those in favor? Thank you very much. It's carried. Okay, we're going to do the minutes. Just kidding. That's all I need to say in case we're anyone else. Okay, under reports and bylaws, if you wish to speak to an application, you'll be required to raise your hand and come forward to the delegation table. Or if you're attending the meeting virtually, use the meeting controls to raise your hand and you'll be called by name to speak. Please clearly state your name and address and explain your views on the application being presented by the applicant. Please note your comments will be recorded or the public record. Those that have registered for the meeting by providing a mailing or email address and those that have spoken or provided written comments will be added to the mailing list to receive copies of the decision. 
Okay, first step, I have Z3122 applicants, Mevin Delwita, and this is uh, Arla. Oh, good morning, Arla. Welcome, and whenever you're ready. All right, good morning, everybody. Application Z3122 has been submitted requesting to rezone the subject property located at 1010 and 1012 Dwight Bay Road to permit the operation of a short-term rental in a C2 community service commercial zone in an existing dwelling with a legal non-complying interior side yard setback. Staff are recommending approval of this application as it is presented today. The subject property has just under half an acre of lot area and road frontage on Dwight Bay Road. Under current zoning, the operation of an STR is not permitted in a C2 commercial zone and requires that a dwelling licensed as an STR must maintain an interior side yard setback of 4.5 meters. The existing dwelling has a reduced legal non-complying interior side yard setback of 3.3 meters, and therefore the applicants are requesting site-specific zoning today. The property is currently zoned C2, Community Service Commercial, and is designated as lands within the core community area of Dwight. The property is currently developed with a dwelling and attached deck, and there is no new development proposed as part of this application. Most of the property has a flat topography with moderate to mature vegetation along the property borders. There is an existing fire pit and patio located to the rear of the dwelling seen on the site plan on the screen. So here's the fire pit. In the lighter yellow, we have the dwelling, and then in the darker yellow, we've got the attached deck and a gravel driveway. The short-term rental bylaw does not include the community service commercial C2 zone in the list of zones that permit STRs. Staff are of the opinion that as the property is developed with an existing dwelling and has continually been used for residential purposes, staff have no concerns with the approval of this application and the permission of the operation of an STR within existing dwellings within commercial zones. Staff received a letter of concern for this application and the applicant's agent submitted comments addressing those concerns raised. Both submissions were attached to the agenda for council's consideration. Concerns raised were in regard to a legal non-complying deck constructed attached to the dwelling prior to the passing of the comprehensive zoning bylaw. The applicant has offered to remove the deck to address their neighbor's concerns, and staff are of the opinion that the comments submitted have been appropriately addressed by the applicant and their agent. Additional public comments were received yesterday, and I have been asked to read them aloud for Council's consideration. Good morning. I have received a letter in regards to the above request and have some concerns I would like addressed. One, we have bylaws, laws, and rules for a reason. By allowing altercations to these, we set a precedent for all others to also challenge them. If you give one group what they want, then you cannot deny the next. Two, in the Muskoka slash Lake of Bays area, we are desperate for housing. We have lots of jobs open. However, people cannot come here to work due to no housing. If we keep allowing people to buy properties and use them for the purpose of weekly or daily rentals, we will not be able to fill the jobs. This in turn will result in services not being provided for everyone coming to this area. We must look to the future of our town and its, and its residents, or we will not have one. Three, I also believe with the influx of the rentals, it will, it will and can hurt the resort industry. We have three resorts in Dwight and many in the surrounding area. Four, I am a permanent resident. I deal with a lot being near the beach. I have rentals all around. The resorts are not a problem as they are monitored on site. The private rentals, as I have previously experienced, are not. Thank you for your consideration, Mary Lou Lawrence. And she's on Dwight Beach Road. To summarize the application, the applicant is seeking approval for site-specific zoning to permit the operation of an STR in an existing dwelling located at an existing reduced interior side yard setback of 3.3 meters. There is no new development proposed as part of this application. Overall, staff are of the opinion that the proposed rezoning and use of the subject lands as an STR within the community of Dwight is appropriate and in character for the subject lands and will facilitate healthy and sustainable development. 
as the application is consistent with the 2020 provincial policy statement and generally conforms to both the district and township official plans, staff have no concerns with the approval of this application subject to the recommendations outlined in the staff report. If you have any questions regarding the concerns raised or the application itself, I would be happy to speak to it and the applicant's agent is attending virtual, virtually and can speak to this as well. Thank you. Councillor Papard. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Arla, the deck that in question that will be removed, is that the lower one that was built over the concrete pad or is it the big deck on the back? Through you, Mayor Glover, to my knowledge, it's the lower deck that they're right. speaking of. And in the comments that the agent submitted, they had offered to remove the deck. Um, but at this point, staff are of the opinion it has no, no impact on the application before council today. This is in regards to a, a structure that's not um, subject to the approval today. Great, thanks. Further questions, Council? Councilor Anderson. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, to our great report, thank um, I, I don't have any major concerns with the report. I, I'm trying to figure out, though, how the concerns are dealt with. Like, a, we, we don't have any influence in that, I take it. Like, the uh, so privacy fence, deck remove, um, how how does that proceeded? Uh, how is that dealt with, um, or are we just on sort of trust with the with the uh, property owner, the applicant? Arla, do you, Mayor Glover? As they are not proposing to construct the deck, nor were they proposing to remove the deck as part of this application, um, it's sort of in between the neighbors. Uh, planning as right now does not regulate fences, um, and. The uh, as it's in a commercial area, but a residential use, it's not. This property is not subject to a site plan agreement, so we can't implement that either. Um, it's it's sort of a civil matter at this point. It's not relation to the STR rezoning today. Did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> Councilor Lacroix. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a a question, I guess, related to the concern. I guess uh, C2 zoning wasn't initially included in the original thought process for short-term rentals. Uh, will this now allow any uh, C2 zoning property to be a potential short-term rental? Do uh, you, Mayor Glover? No. At this point, the way short-term rentals are being handled, if it's uh, proposed in a zone that's not permitted as a right, they still have to come forward for site-specific zoning every individual property at a time. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I assume that that wasn't the case, that each property will be evaluated on a site-specific case. That is correct. Thank you. Further questions for Arla? I'll get to you, sir, in just a second. Um, does the, is the agent wish to speak? Yep, I saw her come on for a second. There she is. Good morning, Marie. How are you? Good morning. Uh, I'm well, thank you. Go I'm going to let my planner, Ernest Young, run with this. And then if there's uh, any further questions um, uh, or comments, I'm, I'm here to uh, answer them for you. But Ernest has this file and he's been working with Arla on it. So I'm going to let him take it away. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Ernest. Welcome. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Hi, good morning, Council um, Chair and Council Member. My name is Ernest Young, a planner with Marie Poirier Planning and associate at 44 King William Street, Unit A, um, Huntsville, P1H1G3. We are representing the leader today to gain support for the application. Um, thank you, Council, for taking time to hear this application today. Um, we want to thank Arla for the review and recommendation for approval and we concur with the SAP recommendation. Um, the primary objective of this application is to permit the uh, establishment of a short-term rental on the subject property. It also aimed to get the existing legal non-compliance structure with a reduced setback formally recognized. Um, the planner has taken note of neighborhoods, neighbors' concern for privacy due to reduced setback. Um, the wooden platform of concern was built prior to the current zoning bylaw and is on the foundation of a removed garage. So to address the neighbor's concern, the owner is willing to install a fence along the subject property side lot line to enhance the privacy of the neighbors. Um, 
this um, this would be the preferred um, solution for the neighbor's concern because he was planning to set up fence along side lot line anyway. Um, but if the council desire, the owner is also willing to remove the wooden platform to gain approval for the zoning amendment. Um, however, the platform was installed by the previous owner to cover the uneven ground and exposed foundation. So um, additional work or structure are still required to ensure the safety of the property after the removal. Um, so there are other existing tourist establishment or and rental facilities nearby and down Dwight Beach Road. So it would be in character with the community and by allowing the Sony amendment, it could also attract um, tourists to the Dwight core area. Um, development and measurement that are beneficial to tourists. Some are encouraged by the township and district official plan as well. So therefore it's our opinion that the proposed rezoning is appropriate for the subject and surrounding land and conform with the township policy. Uh, so we kindly request the application be approved by the council. Uh, we're happy to answer any question you have. Thank you. Council questions? Okay, not seeing any. I know, I know there's a gentleman in the back wishes to speak. If you could come forward, sir, to the microphone, make sure it's on, name and address for, your, for the record, and then uh, hopefully we can answer your questions. There, there's a there's a little button to yeah push that and the light will come. Hello? There you are. You're yeah. on. Good morning. Morning. Your worship, mayor and the committee council. Uh, my name is Piers Hemmingson. I'm the owner of 1154 Dwight Beach Road. I'm not a full-time resident. The property that I do own is a heritage listed property with, with Lake of Bays. And uh, I've listened to all the the folks on the internet and here about uh, the, uh, the plan. Uh, one, one concern I raised is that the deck at the back of the house where, you know, people barbecue faces my kitchen. I have a double, double door. So it's, it's kind of, I, I see what's going on. So mention was made of a fence. So I think that might be, uh, is that something we can agree on that, that the fence is going to be built? Okay, thank you for that. I'm going and, to and it, sorry, I have other questions. Yeah, okay. Well, let's okay. let's deal with one sure. at a time, and yep. and then we'll uh, we'll get through this. So I'm going to go to you, Arlen, now. So because I don't recall this ever in planning either, where we deciding this like this. So um, you need some sort of request for the fence from council. Is that what I understand? So at this point, we can't put conditions into site-specific zoning that structures be built. This would be a matter to be handled between the property owners as a civil matter. It's not a planning matter today. Thank you for that. Okay, next question, sir. Okay, so just stepping back, we, we talked at the beginning about changing the zoning for, for the area, essentially allowing this to be an exception. Uh, I'm all in favor of what's taken place in terms of short-term rentals in Dwight. Um, I think uh, it, was, it was the right thing to do. So I'm all for it. Uh, I'm not in, in the business of short-term rentals at this time. Uh, again, I have a heritage property and, and I work really hard to make sure that it stays as a heritage property. I've owned it for over 20 years. Um, what I would say is that my concern is what's going to happen in the future. You know, we're talking about a fire pit. Essentially, if it's a short-term rental, there will be people there who will have a fire who may or may not be responsible or accountable for having the fire or procedures around having a proper fire and making sure that, that for example, it's not during a peak dry season or something like that, that we could end up with a fire. That would be my worst nightmare, having a heritage property. Um, so what's, hap what's, what's your plan for the next two or three years when, when you allow this to happen? How are you gonna monitor whether it's the right thing to do today? Okay, so I, are you prepared, 
an answer there? Yeah, go ahead, Ernie. Thank you for your concerns. Uh, the operation and maintenance of short-term rentals is handled through bylaw services. Um, so if you have concerns with the fire operation or noise complaints, whatever may happen in the future, I would direct you to talk to our bylaw services because it's not, short-term rentals aren't monitored through planning. The reason the, the site-specific zoning is here today um, is because the zone that the dwelling is currently in does not immediately recognize short-term rentals. The future of the rental itself is bylaw matters. Okay, so if it's one in the morning, I'm, ca I'm calling the bylaw officer. For you, Mayor Glover, that is correct. Okay, um, I think you've covered everything. Um, I have to, I guess, I have to talk to the owner about the fence. That's a civil matter. That's something for me to do. That is correct. Okay, that's all I have to say. And thank you for uh, listening to me. Thank you for coming forward today. We appreciate that. Further questions from the uh, audience with regards to this file? Council, any further questions? Oh, okay. Uh, we have our uh, official building and bylaw official on who wishes to make a comment. Mr. Watson, go ahead, sir. Yes. Um, I'd just like to point out to the uh, property owner and the agent that um, that uh, our records do not indicate that the, they had a permit for this deck. So if it is not removed, then they'll require to apply for a permit. Uh, if it's removed, then uh, the, we have no concerns. Okay, that's with regards to the deck. Anything else, council? Not seeing any. I have a resolution moved by Councillor Brooks, seconded by Councillor Anderson, whereas the Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation of the Township of Lake Bay is hereby receives a staff report, bylaw amendment application Z3122 LOB Del Witta, 1012 Dwight Bay Road, roll number 4427010008048800, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicant has submitted bylaw amendment application Z3122 LOB Del Witta to permit the operation of a short term rental in an existing dwelling with a reduced interior side yard setback in a commercial zone, be resolved that application Z3122 LOB Del Witta be approved and that bylaw 2023077 be passed by council. All those in favor? And it's carried, thank you. Okay, and I have the bylaw. Um, being a bylaw to amend bylaw 04181 known as the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw, Del Wita. Now therefore, the Council of Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bay enacts the following bylaw. Any concerns? All those in favor? It's carried, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That was this, right? Z0723 LB applicants, Murray and Dorothy Ann Malott, uh, Lanny Dennis, Lanny Dennis Planning, and this is Helena. Good morning, yes, still morning. Good morning again, Helena, whenever you're ready. Yes, good morning again. So bylaw amendment application Z07-23 has been submitted to amend the development permit area on the subject lands such that the shoreline portion and backlot portions of the subject property are no longer tied together for planning purposes. Staff recommend that the application be approved. The subject lands are comprised of two pieces of land. The shoreline portion of the property is approximately 0.627 hectares with approximately 97.5 meters of frontage on Lake of Bays and approximately 160 meters of frontage on Narrows Road. Oh, and this property is located at 1081 Narrows Road. The backlot portion is comprised of approximately 4.2 hectares with approximately 142 meters of frontage on Narrows Road. The shoreline portion of the property is developed with dwelling, boathouse, accessory storage structure, and stone patios and walkways. The back lot is vacant. The property had a site-specific development permit area applied to it in 2010 by way of an application made by a previous property owner. At that time, the intent of the property owner was to tie the lots together for planning purposes such that a garage could be constructed on the back lot portion. A garage could not be constructed on the backlot portion alone at the time because the bylaw prohibits the establishment of an accessory use prior to a principal use being established. 
The garage was never constructed, the property changed ownership, and the new owners now wish to separate the lots for planning purposes. Perfect example of planning not being a forever thing. The application seeks to reverse the intent of the previous bylaw such that the properties are no longer tied together for planning purposes. It is the opinion of staff that the approval of the bylaw before council will not result in any non-compliances, that is the resulting standalone shoreline and backlot properties comply with the specific provisions that apply to each lot. The shoreline portion is proposed to revert back to the parent waterfront residential development permit area, and the backlot portion of the property would be waterfront residential with an exception to permit development on a property with slightly deficient road frontage, that is 134.1 meters, where the bylaw requirement is 135 meters. The exception that is on the back lot portion also implemented an additional rear yard setback to ensure development is located an adequate distance from the steep slopes on the rear of the property. Since this additional setback was determined through an earlier planning application, that is when these lots were created, staff is satisfied that this ensures the intent of the official plan is maintained with respect to the steep slope policies. In conclusion, staff are of the opinion the application maintains the intent of the township official plan and development permit bylaw, and we have no concerns with the approval of this application as set out. I am available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for the report. Uh, questions for Helena Council? Okay, I'm going to call on uh, Mr. Dennis. Good morning, sir. Welcome. If you'd like to make us inform us of whatever you'd like to inform us of, <laughs> be some sort of information here. <laughs> Good morning, uh, Mayor Glover, uh, committee, and uh, staff, uh, Lanny Dennis, uh, Lanny Dennis Planning. Um, I represent the owner. I think that's a fair and accurate assessment of the proposal and appreciate the efforts of staff uh, bringing it forward. Uh, I think it's a fairly straightforward application. Basically, we are, we are untying what was previously tied for a different sort of proposal on the property, as noted by the planner, was for a garage. I mean, um, the merits of the proposal, basically, as she's indicated, there's no further non-compliances. Um, sort of reflects the character of the area. Uh, the waterfront lot is already developed. The back lot itself uh, is suitable uh, for development. Uh, the protection of the steep slopes are in place with respect to the uh, the zoning bylaw. Uh, there was no agency concerns, uh, and particularly the district of Muskoka had no concerns. And essentially, the application is returning the situation to the way it was, uh, as a create the, with the back lot being created as a as a building lot. So that's it uh, in a nutshell. And uh, would respect the request uh, committee approve the application. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Questions for Mr. Dennis, Council Tap. Thank you, Mayor Glover. Um, Lanny, are there any plans to put a garage on the waterfront portion? And is there enough land? I, I'm not aware of them putting a garage okay. on the front portion. Further questions? Is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak to this file? Is there anyone virtually? No? Therefore, I have a resolution moved by Councillor Goddard, seconded by Councillor Papard, whereas the Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bay, is hereby receives a staff report, bylaw amendment application Z0723 LB Malat 1081 Narrows Road, rule number 4427-030-013-08910 and 4427-030-013-08600, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicants have submitted bylaw amendment application Z0723 LOE Malat such that the shoreline and backlot parcels on either side of the Narrows Road are no longer tied together as one lot for planning purposes, be it resolved that application Z0723 LOB Malat be approved and that bylaw 2023 078 be passed by council. Further questions, comments? All those in favor? Jared, thank you. And the bylaw being a bylaw to amend bylaw 04180 known as the development permit bylaw Malat. Council for the bylaw, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Next up I have Z0823 LB applicants, Nita and Robert 
Clements, and this is Arla. Whenever you're ready, Arla, thank you. Hello again. All righty. Rezoning application Z0823 LOB is before council today as the applicants are requesting to rezone a portion of their subject property that is currently split zone rural one and waterfront residential backlot. They are requesting this rezoning to facilitate the construction of a new dwelling with an attached garage and to permit a secondary dwelling unit with a gross floor area that exceeds what is permitted as of right under the bylaw within their existing dwelling. Staff are recommending approval of this application as it stands. The application seeks to rezone a portion of the subject lands from rural one zoning to rural one with an exception. The remainder of the subject property zoned as waterfront residential backlot is to remain under its current zoning with no development proposed to occur within the WR portion of this property. The comprehensive zoning bylaw permits a secondary dwelling unit within rural one zoning provided it meets all applicable zoning provisions. Bylaw 2017-014 defines a secondary dwelling unit as a separate year-round self-contained unit that contains a bathroom and kitchen facilities and is subsidiary to a principal dwelling unit. It may be located in the same building as its principal dwelling unit or within a building or structure accessory to the dwelling unit. Zoning currently restricts the maximum gross floor area of a secondary dwelling unit to not exceed the lesser of two options. One, 40% of the gross floor area of the main dwelling or 90 square meters or 968 square feet. Based on staff's calculations, the existing dwelling in which the applicants are seeking to permit the secondary dwelling unit has a gross floor area of 106.8 square meters or 1,150 square feet and represents approximately 75% of the gross floor area of the proposed new dwelling. And thus the application requires council approval today. So on the screen or the slides in front of you in yellow is the existing dwelling where they are seeking to recognize the secondary dwelling unit. And in red is the proposed new dwelling. The subject property has a lot area of approximately 16 and a half acres and approximately 500 meters of road frontage on Muskoka Road 117. The property is currently developed with an existing dwelling and attached garage. Now for this existing dwelling in the picture on the top left, the main floor of the structure is a garage and workshop and um, the dwelling unit is on the second floor of the structure. The property is well vegetated and is partially developed with the existing dwelling that also has an attached uncovered deck and attached garage. The property contains stratum two deer wintering habitat and steep slopes. The applicants submitted a slope assessment in support of their application and staff are satisfied that the comments provided in the inspection meets the requirements of applicable policies under the official plan and have no concerns with the approval of this application. In terms of comments, there were no concerns received. The clerk's department confirmed that there is no shore road associated with this property, and one letter of support was submitted by a neighboring property owner, which was attached to the agenda for your consideration. Staff are of the opinion that the proposed rezoning and use of the subject lands is appropriate and in character with the surrounding lands and will facilitate appropriate development. Staff are of the opinion that the application is consistent with the 2020 provincial policy statement and generally conforms to both township and district official plans. Therefore, staff have no concerns with the approval of this application subject to the recommendations outlined in our report. The property owner is present and may wish to speak to the application, um, and I am happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Very straightforward council questions with regards to this file. Go ahead, Councillor Tapp. Carla, did you say the existing dwelling has a main floor as a garage and a workshop? That is correct. Okay. Further questions? Is there anyone in the audience? Oh, no, we're going to go to the, did the homeowner wish to speak? 
today. Oh, come forward, sir. Name and address the record. Make sure the microphone's on. And um, if you'd like to say anything. Good morning, Mayor Glover and council members. My name is Rob Clements. My wife, Nita, and I own and live at 4675 Muskoka Road 117 in Baysville, POB 1A0. Uh, thank you for processing and hearing our bylaw amendment application. I'll try not to repeat much that Arla has already presented in her very detailed report. Thank you, Arla. As Arla noted, the ultimate purpose of the application is to allow us to build an additional dwelling on our 16-acre property intended to house our daughter and her family. Our daughter and her husband first began renting in Muskoka in 2017 at a somewhat reasonable $1,200 a month rental rate. Five years and two kids later, their rent was up to $2,200 plus utilities for a two-bedroom semi in Bracebridge. The exorbitant rates prompted them to look outside of the province and ultimately resulted in them moving to Newfoundland in mid-2020, or 2022, sorry, where, believe it or not, they purchased a three-bedroom home for less than $100,000. With a mortgage payment of less than $500 per month, they're finally able to start saving. The majority of their time in Newfoundland has been enjoyable, but the isolation and lack of family has been a difficult adjustment. Their plan was always to move back to Muskoka once it became affordable and they had accumulated some savings. It's clear that the market hasn't and likely won't drop back anywhere close to the pre-2020 rates, making it very difficult for young families to afford suitable housing. Both our daughter and her husband had to leave their local jobs last June prior to moving east, but will be rejoining the Muskoka workforce once they return. Upon hopeful approval of this application, we intend on commencing construction later this year with our daughter and her family moving in late next year. Multi-generational properties and specifically households have been the fastest growing type over the last 10 years. And while we understand the size restrictions currently prescribed for a secondary dwelling unit, we hope that an increase to the 90 square meter limit is considered in the next draft of the CPPS bylaw. We believe this could be a contributing solution to the current lack of affordable housing. Thank you all for your time and consideration of this application and kindly request that council supports the staff's recommendation of approval. Okay, thank you for coming forward and uh, questions, anybody for this uh, gentleman here? Not seeing any, is there anyone else in the audience wishes to speak to this file? And there's no one virtually. Okay. I have moved by Council LaCroix, seconded by Councilor Papard, whereas the Council for Planning Matters of the Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bays hereby receives a staff report bylaw amendment application Z0823 LB Clements 4675 Muskoka Road 117, property roll number 4427-030-013-00901, dated May, May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicants have submitted bylaw amendment application Z0823 LOV Clements to recognize an existing dwelling as a secondary dwelling unit with an increased gross floor area than, than permitted and to facilitate the future development of a new dwelling, be resolved that application Z0823 LOV Clements be approved and that bylaw 2023-079 be passed by council. Council, for the vote, all those in favor. Carried, thank you. And the bylaw is being a bylaw to amend bylaw 04181, known as the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw Clements. All those in favor of the bylaw? That's carried. Thank you very much. And thank you, sir, for joining us. I recommend that if you put your notes with regards to the change that you'd like to see in writing, you could address it to me or to planning so that it comes up when we get to discuss that. Thank you. Um, Z1423 LB applicants, Susan and John Walkinshaw, and it's Helena. Welcome back, Helena, whenever you're ready. Thank you. So rezoning application Z14-23 has been submitted to amend the site-specific development permit area on the subject property located at 1486 Fox Point Road to permit as-built retaining walls in the shoreline yard. Staff are generally supportive of this application. 
The subject lands are comprised of approximately 0 0.42 hectares, which is 1.04 acres, with 27.4 meters of frontage on Lake of Bays and 62.7 meters of frontage on Fox Point Road. The property is developed with a dwelling and attached garage and deck, detached garage, dock, and existing retaining walls and stone steps. An amendment to the development permit bylaw was passed in 2018 to permit the development of the existing lot with deficient shoreline frontage. The development permit bylaw section 4.13 permits retaining walls to be located within yard setbacks provided they are no greater than one meter in height. The subject retaining walls are 1.8 meters in height. Rationale provided by the property owner stated that the retaining walls were constructed to replace an existing decrepit set of stairs that were used to safely access the shoreline. The owner also noted steep slopes as a constraint to shoreline access. Staff visited the subject lands on May 11th and confirmed the topographic constraint to shoreline access on the property. Staff further noted that the steps and retaining walls are in character with the area. It is the opinion of staff that the retaining walls and associated set of stone steps adequately provide access to the shoreline and do not contribute to excess shoreline activity area frontage or coverage. That is, the retaining walls do not require any variance to the shoreline activity area provisions. Apart from the activity area associated with, with the retaining walls and stairs and the dock, the shoreline of the property is generally vegetated with mature trees. In conclusion, provided the applicants obtain an updated development permit to recognize the retaining walls and implement a planting plan, staff have no concerns with the approval of the application as set out. Given the number of existing mature trees along the shoreline of the subject property, staff recommend the applicants be required to plant four additional trees to meet the density requirement as set out in the development permit bylaw. Staff are of the opinion the application maintains the intent of the township official plan and development permit bylaw, and the approval will represent good planning. I'm available to answer any questions that you might have about this one. Thank you, Helena. Council, questions for Helena. Council Tapley. If I may, um, the photos of the site, Helena, through you, Mayor Glover. Um, the shoreline appears to be built out where the dock is. I can't really tell from my pictures, but apparently it looks like there's a retaining wall in the built up area. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor Glover, thanks for your question. It was, when I was on site, it was challenging to get a good picture of the property from the shoreline because the dock hadn't been installed for the year. Mm -hmm. so. You can see on one of the photos, like the dock itself, it's not it's not set up. So the photo of the retaining walls there is somewhat zoomed in. The portion where the dock, that portion where the dock is, appears to extend beyond the actual shoreline with gravel fill. I see what you're looking at and I can't comment on that. It's within the shoreline activity area frontage. So is there a question? Well, I was just wondering if that was an infilled, built in area that they've infilled. Well, not, maybe not these people, but the previous people. The, um, they put a uh, retaining wall in the field behind it and they have no more land. Not to my knowledge. However, the property owner may be available online to speak to that or in person. Sure. Thank you. Any further questions for Helena? Okay, um, I, I assume you're the property owner. If you wanna come forward and, and identify yourself for the uh, or committee, name and address for the record and then uh, take it away. My name's John Walkinshaw, um, 1486 Fox Point Road. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. If I understand the first question correctly, um, We've owned the property for about five years. There's been no change to the waterfront um, right at the water edge, uh, just the, the stairs basically on the retaining walls that were put in. Um, the, uh, there is in, in, in the actual water, there's some rocks that it looks like maybe 
50 years ago, people had kind of set in to try and help the erosion. But other than that, there's no other uh, development. Um, and there's actually uh, shrubs and small bushes and stuff right on the edge as well that we've left there with the integrity of the waterfront, so. Thank you. Further questions for the uh, property owner? Is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak to this file? Is there anyone virtually should speak to them? No. Okay. Therefore, moved by Councilor Bard, seconded by Councilor LaCroix, whereas the Council for Planning Matters of the Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bays hereby receives a staff report, bylaw amendment application Z1423 LB, Walkinshaw 1486 Fox Point Road, rule number 442701001201204100, dated May 30th, 2023, and whereas the applicants have submitted bylaw amendment application Z1423 LB, Walkinshaw to permit as built, retaining walls greater than one meter, 3.3 feet in height in the shoreline yard. Now, therefore, be resolved that application Z1423LB Walkinshaw be approved and that bylaw 2023 080 be passed by council. Further questions? Council. All those in favor? It's carried. If I may make a, just a final comment, um, we've had limited work with other councils in different regions and the staff and everyone has just been incredibly helpful in this process. Um, very quick to respond, like kudos to you guys, really very much appreciate it. It's not average from what we've experienced. So thank you. Well, thank you very, very much for the compliment. We will always take a compliment. So good work, staff, council. Uh, yeah, and so I have a being uh, bylaw, being a bylaw to amend bylaw 04180 known as Development Permit Bylaw Walkinshaw. Council, all those in favor? And it's carried. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back at, uh, let's say, 22 the hour. How's that? Thank you.
Okay. Thank you very much for your indulgence. We will move on to council variations to development permit by 04180 DP 1623 LOB revised. The applicants Stephen and Sandra Barkham. And this is Chloe. Oh, there you are. Hello, Chloe. How are you? Hello. Good morning. I'm good. How are you? We're great. We have great weather. We have a few bugs, but other than that, we're good. Do you have bugs out there? Um, a few. It's it's pretty comparable to Muskoka for like mosquitoes, but no black flies yet. So that's a good part. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to them going to see you. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead, DP sixteen twenty three. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. So as you may remember, we did hear this application um, at the last Council for Planning Matters meeting, and this is their revised proposal. Um, so the applicants are requesting approval of this application in order to facilitate the reconstruction of a 38.89 square meter deck, a 14.37 square meter addition to the existing dwelling by way of a covered attached and enclosed porch, a 22.3 six four square meter dock that was constructed without benefit of a development permit, a 7.04 square meter addition to the existing deck that was constructed without benefit of a development permit, and a 9.29 square meter shed that was constructed without benefit of a development permit. The application previously heard before the April 25th, 2023 Council for Planning Matters meeting where the applicant had requested a deferral to today's date in order to submit more accurate values to represent the proposal. The revised proposal following the deferral of the application has remained re relatively unchanged and therefore the proposal before council today does not address staff's previous concerns. Therefore, staff are recommending that the application as presented today be denied. The subject property went through a rezoning application Z16-2007 LOB for the purposes of joining the shoreline lot and the back lot together for planning purposes, as the owners at the time wished to construct a garage on the back lot. The application was approved at the time under the following conditions, that the shed on the property be removed, and that the subject lands remain at or under the existing level of built form due to the excess of structure on the shoreline lot. It is staff's understanding that the shed was not removed and that there was structure added to the subject lands without the benefits of development or building permits following this rezoning application. Staff is of the opinion that the reconstruction of the existing deck and the retention of the existing dock would be appropriate for the subject lands, that the construction of a addition to the existing dwelling by way of a covered attached and enclosed porch, construction of an addition to the existing deck and the construction of the shed does not maintain the natural characteristics of the site, will create an instance of building mass being disproportional with the size of the frontage of the property and does not comply with the official plan or development permit bylaw. Therefore, again, staff are recommending that the application as presented today be denied. Um, I believe that the property owner is present and if anybody has any questions for me, I would be happy to assist. Okay, Chloe, Council, do you need any more clarification on this? The staff are recommending a denial. Um, I'm looking around to see if anybody, Councilor Anderson, go ahead, sir. Thank you, through you, Mayor Glover. I was just looking for a little clarification, Chloe, if I could, on uh, what was constructed and not constructed by permit, um, or the benefit of permit. And I, oh, can you do that through uh, the photos possibly, or the sketch, can you? Just do a little review of that for us. Yeah, for sure. Let me just pull that back up again. So I guess in the photos I can try and show. Um, if you just give me one moment, I'll pull up the site plan from the notice. And I think that that can probably help a little bit better to show the actual structure because it is identified right on there. Just give me two seconds to get this pulled up. Okay. 
So as we can see here, um, this is the older notice. So I'm going to leave the dock out. But this red section here of the deck was constructed without benefit of a permit. This shed was required to be removed. So we're viewing it as constructed without benefit of a permit. And this yellow dock, ignore this red one, but this yellow dock was constructed without benefit of a permit. If that assists, um, I can also try and see it in the photos if that would help you as well. I, I think that's sufficient. Thank you. So we've got a bunch of stuff constructed without permits. Anything else, Council? Questions? Seeing none, I see uh, the gentleman owner. If you'd like to come forward and um, identify yourself on the microphone, name and address for the record, and uh, give us your side of the story. Mayor Glover and Council, good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Bartram. I live at 53 Cathedral Pines in Oromodonte Township. Uh, this property, my wife Sandra and I became the new owners of in October 2019 by way of an inheritance. I've learned a lot about the property in the last month and a bit, and that there are some non-compliant issues. Our end plan is to make the property compliant. There are reasons uh, what was dealt with uh, by my father-in-law um, that they did that, which I can explain if you're interested. Uh, my intention is to sit down, if I can, with the planning department um, to figure out what I need to do to make the property compliant. and then submit a revised or updated um, submission. At the last meeting we deferred to today, I was not aware of, and the contractor was not aware that our submission had to be in by the first week of May. So Chloe did not receive anything from the contractor to update or make corrections. There wasn't enough time. Um, so I don't know your process to go forward from today. Do we defer? to allow it to meet with planning or get a planning consultant. Um, okay, well, thank you very right. much. Our, our intention is to be compliant with the bylaws. I understand the bylaws and that they're there for a purpose. Okay, well, we um, we appreciate that you want to, um, you know, straighten this thing out. Um, I'm gonna go first to council. Did you have any further questions? Or, I mean, obviously we've got kind of a, in the smash bowl of salad here that's that needs a lot of work so i'm going to go we have deferred this once um but i'm just going to double check i've got a question for uh i don't know chloe or april um uh, i don't think we should defer this again do we do we deny it and then the, the gentleman comes forward with a whole new plan is that what it is because i think there's a lot of things that have to happen we've got these buildings that are still there that that were never properly permitted that has got to go another route probably to get put into practice i mean it's it's a it's a big mess so if i can get some guidance from someone as to what i believe we we would deny this and start over is, is what i think but uh, go ahead through you mike lover um, so yeah, the recommendation from council or to council today from staff is a denial. Um, you know, we when we planning receives an application, we evaluate it based on what's before us. Um, so that is a recommendation based on the information we have that there's a denial. Council does have the option, obviously, to defer to a later meeting. Um, but again, the the staff's recommendation is a denial, and then the applicant would be required to reapply um, for another development permit application, which would be evaluated by staff accordingly. To answer your question. Council. Bopar. Yeah, Councilor Bopar. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor, to April. At April is sort of a process thing. Um, literally, is there a way to basically say we could defer so long as basically they don't come back for minor variance? They do everything that staff says they have to do to be compliant. If they're wanting to be compliant, I can't figure it heads or tails whether we can go that route or not. Thank you, Mayor Glover. So as part of the denial of this application, the applicants would be required to remove a number of the structures to make it compliant with the bylaw. So that is part of the recommendation and the result of a denial. Um, that's that's one option. Obviously, you can you can defer if you'd like to, uh, but we would need specific um, direction and, and dates, everything like that. But again, we're recommending no the denial. Like that. Councilor Brooks. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I first of all want to support 
our resident who wants to do things the right way. And we've seen this many times with, with inheritance properties. Uh, it's wonderful to get property from friends and neighbors uh, that pass it along, but unfortunately you don't realize what you've got into. And this is a situation that unfortunately they're, they're in right now. I tend to uh, agree with staff that the cleanest way of dealing with this is to deny this application, come back with ducks in a line, doing it properly, and everybody's going to be beneficial. Uh, every sorry, everybody will be supported by this more beneficial approach. And um, uh, it just it's it's a much cleaner approach than than trying to do another patchwork quilt on one that's already tried to be done. And so yeah, and as I understand it, sir, you have recommended possibly uh, contacting a planner. I would highly recommend that because it's very technical. And am I able to sit down with someone from planning here through the township? Just to go over, I believe once first. once we're moving to a new thing, they're allowed to call and have questions and get put through because our even, system. Even the dock, I know, like with the shoreline activity frontages, the, the dock can be reconfigured to be within the shoreline boundaries, where I believe right now it's not. But I'm not positive on that. Yeah. <laughs> Through you, Mayor Glover. Um, yeah, so if you do end up submitting um, a subsequent application, if it is denied today, uh, staff can meet with you. Um, but again, we're not we're not here to be your designer. So if you would oh, like no, someone no. Yeah, to help you with design. that. I yeah. just need to know this has got to go. This has got to go. Yeah, we can sit down. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So and then, can... then a proper site plan can be submitted to you. Yeah. So we're basically starting from scratch. Councillor LaCroix? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just have to agree with staff on this one. It's a timing issue because, you know, this could take two or three or four months and um, we'd run out of time. So we don't want to go anywhere besides here. So it's better off to deny it and then have it come back and start all over well, I, again. I don't want to waste the township's time either. Okay. Any further questions, Council? Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this file? No, not seeing anyone. Okay, so I'm going to read this part. This one, we read all these as well. Okay. Moved by Councillor Papard, seconded by Councillor Croy. Whereas the Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation of the Township of Lake Bay is hereby receives a staff report, development permit application, DP 1623 LOB Barkham, revised. 1113 East Grandview Lake Road, property roll number 03001207700, dated May 30th, 2023, and whereas the applicants have submitted development for an application DP1623 LOB Barkham revised in order to facilitate the reconstruction of a 38.89 square meter, 418.7 square foot deck, and a 14.37 square meter, 154.76 square foot addition to an existing dwelling by way of a covered attached and enclosed porch at 22.64 square meter, 243.75 square foot dock that was constructed without the benefit of a development permit, as well as to permit the construction of a 7.04 square meter, 75.85 square foot addition to the existing deck that was constructed without the benefit of a development permit and a 9.29 square meter, 100 square foot shed that was constructed without the benefit of a development permit. And whereas relief from the following sections of bylaw 04180 is required to permit the proposed construction, section 5.1.1 minimum shoreline yard setback of 20 meters, 65.6 feet existing. We have existing shoreline yard setback of 14.93 meters, 49 feet to an existing dwelling. The relief applied for to permit a minimum shoreline yard setback of 13.7 meters, 45 feet to a covered enclosed porch and proposed shoreline setback of 15.8 meters, 52 feet to a proposed deck addition to the southeast side of the dwelling. Section 5.1.1, maximum shoreline activity area coverage of 40%, existing shoreline activity area coverage of 57.77% or 59.86 square meters, 644.4 square feet to permit a maximum shoreline activity area coverage of 69.79% or 72.3 square meters, 778.3 square feet. Section 5.1.1, maximum shoreline activity area frontage, 25% existing shoreline activity area frontage of 15.24 meters, 50 feet or 75%, and then to permit an overall shoreline activity area frontage 
of 16.48 meters, 54.10 feet or 81%. And then section 5.1.1 maximum lot coverage of 10%, existing lot coverage of 13.5 or 175.66 square meters, 890 square feet to prevent a maximum lot coverage of 14.78% or 197.39 square meters, 2,124.7 square feet. Now, be it resolved that development permit application DP 1623, LOB Barkham be denied. All those in favor, it's carried. Okay. And just, just wanting to know what the process is to book an appointment with somebody from planning. How do I, I arrange that? No, he just wanted to know the process. Yeah, so at this point, uh, your application has been denied. Yes. No, uh, yep, so you can contact planning staff uh, to move forward with, with an application. If just you wish to go that just phone in and we can arrange a date type of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, next up I have DP 1823 LB applicants, Robert Moroz, and this is Esther Schultz. Thank you. A development permit application DP 1823 has been submitted for property located at 1335 Bellwood Acres Road. The applicant is requesting approval of this application to facilitate the demolition of an existing dwelling, a two story frame building and dock, and the construction of a 207.9 square meter single story dwelling with two. 39.9 square meter attached open and unenclosed decks resulting in a reduced side yard setback and an increased lot coverage. Staff are recommending approval of this application. The property has a lot area of 0.27 hectares with 30.48 meters of frontage on Paint Lake. The property is currently developed with a dwelling, attached decks, two story, a two-story storage structure with bunky above, garage, and two docks. The shoreline is characterized by a manicured lawn with mature trees. The new dwelling will be set back 21 meters from the shoreline, greater than the required setback of 20 meters. This represents an overall improvement over the current dwelling setback, which is set at 15.8 meters. A planting plan will be required to reestablish a natural shoreline buffer along 75% of the shoreline frontage. This will be implemented by way of the development permit conditions. The proposed construction of the single story dwelling and attached decks would result in an overall lot coverage of 13.91%, where 10% is permitted as right. The development permit bylaw allows staff to approve lot coverage variances up to 25%, that is not to exceed 12.5%. Therefore, this application requires council approval. The request for a reduced interior side yard setback of 3.66 meters, where 4.5 meters is required, does fall within a staff variation. However, according to section 2.30 of the development permit bylaw, should an application require both staff and council approval, the entire application requires a council approved development permit. The side yard setback requested is 0 0.84 meters less than the minimum required. Staff opine that this reduction is minor in nature. Um, I'll draw your attention to the slide with the photos. This um, top left picture is a view from their driveway looking um, across the property. You can see the two-story structure to the left here, which um, will be the, um, has the storage and bunky, which will be removed. This view here shows the front area. You can see the existing cottage here. And this deck dock is the one that will be removed. And this is the area in here, which will be reestablished with the planting plan. Um, the bottom right photo shows the back of the existing cottage and you can see the garage, um, the, the, the garage structure, which will remain. 
with the removal of the existing dwelling, one of the docks and the two story structure and the construction of the new dwelling set back further from the shoreline than existing. Staff are of the opinion that with the implementation of recommended plantings along the shoreline and retention of existing vegetation on the property, the proposed development would have minimal negative impacts on the lake and surrounding properties. It's staff opinion that the proposed development is in keeping with the existing development character and meets the intent design, the intent design principles and policies of the official plan. If anyone has any questions regarding the application, I'll try my best to answer them. Um, the applicants are also present here this morning if Council has any specific questions for them. Thank you. Thanks very much for the report. Councillor Anderson, does he have a question? A comment, if I may, through you, Mayor. Just, um, I, I'm really impressed with the, uh, I know we're not in, just in the uh, business of design or whatever, but I love the fact that this bill's going back, that it's um, low height. We're getting a 15 meter uh, shoreline um, available for buffer. I, I think this is brilliant. And I just want to encourage people to see this and to do more of this. I think it's a really, really a, a good, I su support it fully. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Papar. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. I just have uh, one concern. Um, who who approves the planting plan ultimately? Who decides or who gets to design that and how do we approve it? Through you, Mayor Glover, that's planning staff. Yes, thanks. Um, I do have a concern. There's a lot of mown grass, and they're basically just a handful of little herbaceous plants. And if they die, then we've got a few shrubs left. I'd really like to see a couple more trees and shrubs in that area possible. Uh, through you, Mayor Glover, I can also speak to we do have density requirements in the bylaw, so it would allow um, sufficient buffering to meet those requirements. Um, typically, we do ask for a request for a mix of trees and shrubs to make sure that there is. A kind of year-round visual um, impacts being reduced. Excellent, because it doesn't include any trees and in they're in the plan on the page. So that's a concern to me. Mike Glover, thank you for the comment. We'll take a look at that. Further questions? Okay, I understand uh, the owners are here, you said. Does someone wish to come forward? No? Okay, any questions for anyone from the audience here? Any questions virtually? Okay, council agrees. Moved by Councillor LaCroix, seconded by Councillor Bupard. Where is the Council for Planning Matters Corporation and Township of Lake Bay is hereby receives a staff report. Development permit application DP 1823 LB. Moraz, 1335 Bellwood Acres Road, roll number 4427-030-010-04100, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicant has submitted development permit application DP 1830 LOB Moraz to facilitate the demolition of an existing dwelling frame building and dock and permit the construction of a single-story dwelling with attached open and unclosed deck with a reduced interior side yard setback and an increased lock coverage and whereas relief from the following sections of bylaw number 04180 is required to permit the proposed construction section 5.1.1 minimum interior side yard set setback 4.5 meters 14.7 feet there's nothing existing in this permit a minimum interior side yard setback of 3.66 meters 12 feet to a proposed dwelling to permit a minimum interior side yard setback of 3.66 meters 12 feet to a proposed attached open and unenclosed deck and section 5.1.1 maximum lot coverage 10 percent existing 10.13 percent or 272.4 square meters 2932 square feet and it's to permit a maximum lot coverage of 13.91%, 373.7 square meters or 4,023 square feet. Now be a result of the Council for Planning Matters of the Corporation of the Township of Lake Bays provisionally approves this application pending the following receipt of approval of satisfaction of the Township of Planning Plan associated with planting fees and removal of the existing 143.07 square meter. 1,540 square foot dwelling with attached decks and existing 10.03 square meter, 108 square foot dock as per attached in Schedule A. Upon receipt and approval of the required, then the criteria is outlined Schedule C of the development permit bylaw would thereby 
therefore be fulfilled and council would hereby approve the subject proposal in accordance with attached schedule a subject to the following conditions that works be carried in accordance with plans submitted april 25th 2023 and mark dp 1823 lob that all lighting facilities shall be directed downwards and be required to minimize the impact on lake views neighboring properties night skies and environmental features and on a pro property adjacent to water a shoreline buffer shall be maintained abutting any portion of a shoreline that does not form part of the shoreline activity area if it is identified on the attached schedule, a shoreline buffer shall be a minimum of 15 meters, 49.2 feet in depth measured inland from the ordinary water's edge unless otherwise specified. All of the provisions of bylaw 04180 must be complied with. If an activity area is not identified, all shoreline vegetation shall be maintained that the submitted planting plan be implemented and that all existing vegetation on the remainder of a lot is shown in Schedule A as the date of passing of this resolution be retained. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Next up, DP 2523, Amy and Mike Haid, and this is Chloe again. Go ahead, Chloe. Thank you. Okay. Application for Development Permit 2523 LOB Hade is requesting the approval to facilitate the construction of an addition to the existing dwelling, a deck attached to the existing dwelling, a detached two story garage, and a deck attached to the proposed two story garage. The proposed open and unenclosed deck would encroach within the required watercourse setback with a reduced setback from 15 meters to 14.97 meters. And the proposed covered and enclosed porch would encroach within the required shoreline yard setback with a reduced setback from 30 meters to 28.4 meters. In addition, the applicants propose to remove vegetation within the required natural vegetative buffer surrounding the water course to construct a crossing to the proposed garage on the opposite side of the stream as the existing dwelling. So we'll see here the entrance to the property by way of their driveway. This is our existing dwelling, the front of the existing dwelling where a lot of the proposed changes are, um, and then their shoreline structures, which are remaining the same. And here are some photos of culverting on the property where the flow, you can see it's, it's mostly, um, I believe it's mostly stormwater runoff that can, controls the flow of this. Um, as you can see, there's, a little bit of sitting water in this photo, but mostly it is primarily dry in a lot of the areas. The majority of the property is well vegetated and in a natural forested state. The watercourse that bisects the property runs north to south, entering Lake of Bays at its furthest extent. The applicants have advised that the watercourse is controlled by a culvert that has been installed on the property and has existed on the property for decades. The watercourse is not identified as a cold water stream on available mapping, and the applicants have indicated that the watercourse has more flow existing in the damper seasons. See here, um, this lighter blue line would be where that culvert is approximately and the water flow is approximately located. Um, here's the changes to the dwelling on the front. You can see a concept view here, and then that garage. So the area. Within the shoreline yard, I believe it would be similar to further back on this side, but you can kind of see the continuation of the driveway that way um, would be put in to access this proposed garage. Staff are of the opinion that the submission of an opinion letter from an ecological consultant speaking to any potential negative impacts on the watercourse bisecting the property and or fish habitat along the shoreline as a result of the proposed development and vegetation removal, including any recommended mitigative measures should be required prior to the approval of the subject application. Therefore, staff are recommending that the application be provisionally approved with the requirement for the applicants to obtain an opinion letter from an ecological consultant. Um, I can assist if there's any questions and I do believe that the property owner is here virtually. First up, questions for Chloe with regards to this. Councillor Papard. 
Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Chloe, could you pull up the slide which has the, the schematic of what's going to be built and has the water course and the culvert? Absolutely. One moment. This, I believe, is what you're looking for. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in the report, it indicates in building the garage, they may have to remove extra vegetation that's in the buffer zone between by the creek, but it looks like the whole garage is outside of that buffer zone. So where are we removing vegetation that might put the creek at risk? Right. Um, through you, Mayor Glover. So you see this driveway here. This isn't existing. The driveway, not sure of the exact line, but the driveway currently ends at the dwelling. Um, so this driveway to access the proposed garage would be installed for that purpose. Um, there's a requirement in the development permit bylaw to have a 15 meter natural vegetative buffer around all water courses. Yeah. As this stream has been identified as a water course, the 15 meters surrounding, so we can see these hatched dark blue lines, would be that setback. So this area is typically required to be fully vegetated. Yeah. Um, the proposal is, is requesting that it be removed in this area. As we aren't really aware of the, the severity of the stream or any impacts that this may have, that's the reasoning for asking for that ecological consultant. Um, just because staff aren't really aware, it's not identified as a cold water stream. We don't really have a lot of information from the provincial government on it. Um, so that's the reasoning for that. I totally agree with that. That makes sense. Further council? Okay, seeing none, um, does the owner or agent wish to comment? Yes, please. Hello, good morning, welcome. I need your name and address for the record and then the uh, uh, floor is yours. Uh, hello, Mayor and Council and, and staff. Um, thanks for meeting with us today. My name is uh, Mike Hade. Um, and this subject property is at 1241 um, Highland Park Road. Uh, we live at uh, 4725 Hessenstrasse Road in Wellesley, Ontario. This is a, a cottage, a family cottage for us that we purchased roughly a year ago. Um, so I just first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Chloe for all the work you've done on this. Um, the, are we able to bring that slide back up, Chloe, um, just to, for a little more explanation on, on where the existing driveway stops? Absolutely. <clears throat> so thank you for that. So if you, if you notice, there's a, a, a darker um, blue hatched line um, that that runs across, uh, actually runs across uh, left to right. I wish I could put my cursor on here. I'm sorry. Yeah, that line. So that is the uh, that is the setback uh, from the water's edge. Uh, so the lake's edge, and then there's a similar color but a different dash pattern lines <clears throat> that run parallel to the water course. Uh, that's being discussed, um, one on either side that is 15 meters back from where we assume that the creek is. So uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of space and we tried to situate the buildings um, into locations that we stay out of, out of as many of those areas as possible. That's why the garage is where it is. Um, but specifically the driveway, just to just to add to what Chloe was mentioning about where the existing driveway is, basically everything to the left of the um, existing culvert. So if you see the existing culvert there, uh, actually uh, down into your right a little bit, the blue line, Chloe. Yeah, so everything to the left of that that you see as driveway exists. Um, so the driveway actually does come um, uh, past, the, I guess it's the front of the deck area. Um, so we, we wouldn't be doing any anything to the vegetation um, to the left of the of the existing culvert. 
it's to the right. And I think the setback is seven and a half meters, but um, for, for vegetation removal, and it's 15 meters for, um, for, for buildings. Am, am I correct on that, Chloe? So there's a, sorry, through you, Mayor Glover, there's a requirement for a 15 meter naturalized buffer from all um, water courses, okay. which would be that, that dark blue hatch would be where 15 meters lays. Okay. So I, I stand corrected on that. I, um, I, I, my wife was able to go on to um, the, uh, the township's website there and, and find the, the report prior to this meeting, but only about a week ago. Um, and we did see that there was a recommendation uh, by staff to have uh, an ecologist's opinion. Um, so we actually went ahead and did that. And we do have that. Um, so uh, that's really all the comments. I just want to provide a little clarity on the on where the existing dragway is. Um, everything else that uh, that Chloe has mentioned is is accurate. Um, and we do have that uh, that report available to you. Okay, thank you very much for that. Is that your your guest, sir, there, or your wife, or beside you? Sorry, this is my wife, Amy. Okay, well, if I didn't introduce my wife at the beginning, you're, you're getting macaroni for dinner or something, sir. I'm sorry about that, but anyway. Yeah, thank you very much for the pointing that out. Questions, council? Not seeing anyone in the audience wish to speak to this. Does anyone virtually wish to speak to this file? Seeing none, okay. Just got to do a little bit of. Moved by Councillor LaCroix, seconded by Councillor Papard. Whereas the Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation and Township of Lake of Bay is hereby receives a staff report development permit application DP2523 LOB Hade 1241 Highland Park Road. Rule number 4427030009053300, dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicants have submitted development permit application DP2523 LB Hade in order to facilitate the construction of a 40 square meter, 431 square foot addition to an existing dwelling, uh, 884.3 square meter, 907 square foot deck attached to the existing dwelling, 126 square meter. 1,356 square foot detached two-story garage and a 21.9 square meter, 236 square foot deck attached to the proposed two-story garage. The requests would result in a reduced shoreline yard setback to a WEP1 development permit area, a reduced setback to a water course bisecting the property, as well as removal of a portion of a buffer surrounding the water course. And whereas relief from the following sections of bylaw number 04180 is required to permit the proposed construction. Section 5.1.1D, minimum shoreline yard setback of 30 meters, 98.4 feet to a WEP1 development permit area existing. We have a shoreline yard setback of 32.1 meters, 105.3 feet to an existing open and unenclosed deck. And the relief is to permit the minimum shoreline yard setback of 28.4 meters, 93.17 feet to a covered enclosed porch. Section 4.94, minimum setback to a water course of 15 meters, 49.2 feet, existing setback to a water course of approximately 16 meters, 52.9 feet to an existing open and unenclosed deck. And then the relief is to permit a minimum setback of, to a water course of 14.97 meters, 49.11 feet to a proposed open and unenclosed deck attached to an existing dwelling. Section 4.94, minimum natural buffer surrounding water course of 7.5 meters, 24.6 feet existing natural buffer surrounding water course of 15 meters to permit a minimum natural buffer surrounding a water course of zero meters to a proposed driveway to cross an existing water course. Now, be it resolved that the Council for Planning Matters the Corporation of Township of Lake of Bay provisionally approves this application pending the receipt and approval to the satisfaction of the township the following an opinion letter from an ecological consultant speaking to a potential impacts on the water course bisecting the property and or fish habitat along the shoreline as a result 
of the proposed development and vegetation removal, including any recommended mitigative measures, if necessary, that a work permit be obtained from the MNRF to propose the watercourse crossing and a copy be provided to the township or confirmation from MNRF that a work permit is not required. Upon receipt of the above with the criteria as outlined schedule C, the development permit bylaw would therefore be fulfilled and council would hereby approve the subject proposed in accordance with attached schedules A and B, subject to the following conditions, subject to the following conditions. Oh, I think there's two subject to the following conditions there. That the work be carried out in accordance with the plan stated December 15, 2022 and mark DP 113-223 LOB, that all lighting facilities shall be directed downwards, minimize the impact of lake views, neighboring properties, night skies, and environmental features, and on a property adjacent to water, the shoreline buffer shall be maintained abutting any portion of a shoreline that does not form part of the shoreline activity area. If it is identified in the attached schedule, a shoreline buffer shall be a minimum of 15 meters, 49.2 feet in depth measured inland from the ordinary water's edge unless otherwise specified. All of the provisions of bylaw 04180 must be complied with. If, if an activity area is not identified, all shoreline vegetation shall be maintained. That all existing vegetation on the remainder of the lot outside the areas of proposed development building envelope, as shown in Schedule A, of the date of passing of the resolution be retained. That any recommendations in the opinion letter from the ecological consultant be implemented. Council for the vote. All those in favor. And it's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Okay, next up I have DP 2823, David and Julie Hoffman, Arla. Go ahead, Arla, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mayor Glover. All right. So development permit application DP 2823 LOB has been submitted for property located at 4315 Muskoka Road 117. The applicants are requesting approval of this application to facilitate the construction of an attached uncovered deck in place of an existing stone patio, to facilitate the relocation of an existing studio space, and the construction of an addition onto an existing legal non-complying dwelling. The proposed construction of an 82.4 square meter attached, uncovered, and unenclosed deck in place of an existing stone patio will result in a shoreline activity area coverage that exceeds the maximum permitted as of right and is proposed to be constructed at a reduced shoreline setback of 13.6 meters, where the bylaw requires 20 meters and therefore requires council approval. The application also proposes the relocation of an existing 10 square meter detached studio space and construction of a 43.9 square meter addition onto the existing dwelling, which complies with all other provisions of the development permit bylaw. Planning justification was provided by the applicant's agent and states that the location of the deck was chosen as it will be constructed exactly in place of the existing stone patio. So on the site plan on the screen, we can see here in yellow, this is the existing dwelling. And then in red is the proposed deck that's gonna wrap around. And then behind the deck is the proposed addition. And then this little red um, square off to the left is the studio that they're proposing to relocate. The subject property is located on Lake of Bays, has a lot area of 0 0.8 acres and approximately 62 meters or 202 feet of shoreline frontage. The property is currently developed with a detached dwelling, studio, dock, boathouse, and an existing sauna on the dock. The shoreline has steep sloping downwards towards the water and is moderately vegetated with mature trees. The applicants are proposing to revegetate a portion of the shoreline in front of the proposed deck to offset visual impact from the shore. The subject property has 202 feet of straight line frontage on Lake of Bays based on the sketch provided by the applicant's agent and therefore has a maximum permitted shoreline activity area frontage of 44.75 feet and a maximum permitted shoreline activity area coverage of 1,172 square feet. The shoreline portion of the property is partially developed with an existing boathouse, dock, and sauna, existing landscape stairs, and a portion of the existing stone patio. So the photos on the screen 
on the top left, this is the existing stone patio running parallel to the shoreline that they're proposing to replace with a deck. On the top right, we've got the boathouse dock and sauna. And then another view of the patio that's in front of the front entrance of the dwelling. And then this space on the bottom right is where they're proposing to put the addition. The property has an existing legal non-complying shoreline activity area frontage of approximately 47% or 95.5 feet. And there are no proposed changes to the frontage as part of this application. If approved by council today, the proposed construction of the deck partially in the shoreline yard will result in an increased shoreline coverage of 55.7% or 1,846 square feet. The proposed deck will not be located any closer to the shoreline than the existing stone patio at an already established setback of 13.3 meters. Should the applicants have wished to construct a new stone patio in place of their existing one, they would be permitted to do so by way of a category one DP. As part of this application, the applicants are proposing to remove existing landscape stairs in two different portions of the property and have proposed to plant a minimum of nine stems in order to reestablish the vegetative buffer. As the proposed deck is considered a structure under the development permit bylaw, it contributes to shoreland activity area coverage and therefore bumps the coverage up beyond what is permitted as stone patios do not contribute to coverage. The subject property abuts type two fish habitat and abuts a category one cold water lake and was identified to contain steep sloping. As part of this application, a slope inspection was completed by a qualified professional and submitted in support of this proposal. The slope assessment examined the sloping along the property from a stability and short stability and erosion potential standpoint for both existing and proposed conditions. 12 recommendations were identified in the slope assessment, and it is staff's opinion that the recommendations must be incorporated into the DP by way of conditions. So the picture on the screen shows the steep sloping. We've got the dwelling up at the top right, and then the slope kind of goes downwards towards the left, and then the shore is kind of off in this corner. And we can see some of the landscape stairs that they, the applicants are proposing to remove as part of this application. Should council elect to approve this application, staff recommend that the development permit require all existing vegetation be retained on the remainder of the lot and that the submitted planting plan be implemented as a condition of the development permit. It's staff's opinion that the proposed development is in keeping with the existing character of the property and meets the intent, design principles, and policies of the official plan. It is further staff's opinions that the work meets the criteria set out in section C1 and C3 of the development permit bylaw for a council variation. Therefore, staff have no concerns with the approval of this application subject to our recommendations outlined in the staff report. If council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. And I know the property owner is present and the agents are present over Zoom. Thank you, Arlen. Questions, council? Not seeing any, uh, would you like to make a statement, sir? <laughs> you know what? I, I've seen that happen where they want to speak and then it, it opens up a new can of worms. So good for you. Um, no one else wished to speak virtually. Um, okay, so I have moved by Councillor Brooks, seconded by Councillor Anderson, whereas Council for Planet. Oh, right. Okay, sir. Go ahead, sir. Do you wish to, uh, Mr. Ross, go ahead. Uh, you, uh, yes, Duncan Ross, uh, 36, K, uh, 36 Chafee Street, Suite 201, Huntsville, P1H, 1J4. Uh, I'm happy that the planning staff um, are in support of this. I, I don't have anything other than to say I'm here to answer any questions. That's it. Okay, sorry about that. Any questions, council, that may have occurred to you since I started the email? <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Moved by Councillor Brooks, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Whereas Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation of Township of Lincoln Bay is hereby receives a staff report. Development permit application DB 2823 LB Hoffman 4315, Muskoka Road 117, roll number 030015 08700. 
dated May 30th, 2023. And whereas the applicant has submitted a development permit application DP 2823 LB Hoffman in order to facilitate the construction of an 82.4 square meter, 887.7 square foot attached and covered in an unenclosed deck, relocation of an existing 10 square meter, 108 square foot studio, and the construction of a 43.9 square meter, 472.6 square foot addition onto an existing legal non-complying dwelling. And whereas relief from the following se sections of bylaw number 04180 is required to permit the proposed construction. Bylaw requirements, section 5.1.1, minimum shoreline yard setback of 24 meter, uh, 20 meters, 65.6 feet, existing 17.4 meters, 57.17 feet to existing legal non-complying dwelling. And the relief applied for is to permit minimum shoreline yard setback of 13.6 meters, 44.7 feet to a proposed attached unenclosed, uncovered and unenclosed deck. Section 5.1.1, maximum shoreline activity area coverage of 40%, existing 31.9% or 98.2 square meters, 10, 1,057 square feet. And then the relief is to permit a maximum shoreline activity area coverage of 55.7% or set 171.5 square meters, 1,846.4 square feet. Now there, now be it resolved, the Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation of Township of Lake Bay approves this application subject to the following conditions. The works be carried out in accordance with the plan submitted April 25th, 2023 and mark DP 2821E23 LB that all lighting facilities shall be directed downwards and required to minimize the impact on lake views, neighboring properties, night skies, and environmental features. That on a property adjacent to water, a shoreline buffer uh, shall be maintained abutting any portion of the shoreline that does not form part of the shoreline activity area if it is identified on the attached schedule. A shoreline buffer shall be a minimum of 15 meters, 49.2 feet in depth measured inland from the ordinary water e water's edge unless otherwise specified. All other provisions by law 04180 must be complied with. If an activity area is not identified, all shoreline vegetation shall be maintained. That the lot be developed in accordance with the erosion hazard assessment, final 4315 Muskoka Road 117 Basel, Ontario, project number 22-019, dated January 3rd, 2023, completed by PRI Engineering Corp. That the provided planting plan be implemented to reestablish a vegetative buffer and that all existing vegetation in the remainder allowed outside the area's proposed building envelope is shown in Schedule A as the date of passing of this resolution be retained. Council, for the question, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, next up I have DP3423, LB applicants David Rule and Lee Vosberg, and it's Chloe. Go ahead, Chloe. Thank you. Okay. DP 3423 um, is to request the approval of the application in order to facilitate the construction of an addition to the existing legal non complying dwelling, which is located within the shoreline activity area and would consist of an increase in footprint of 15 square meters resulting in a reduced interior side yard setback, as well as the addition of a second story to the legal non-complying dwelling, resulting in a height greater than the existing. The applicants are also requesting the approval for the construction of a 41 square meter sleeping cabin to the rear of the existing dwelling. The applicants are proposing to vertically expand the existing legal non-complying dwelling with a height increase that exceeds the maximum height increase allotted through a staff variation. Um, the requested amount is 65% greater than the original dwelling height. The addition would create a partial second story in a location that would be mostly shielded from lake views due to the existing vegetative buffer. The dwelling will remain almost entirely within the existing footprint, with the exception of a small addition proposed to be constructed at the rear of the structure furthest from the shoreline. This is also where the request for the reduced interior side yard setback comes from. The lot contains moderately steep slopes across the entirety with the exception of the location of the existing dwelling as well as the proposed location of the sleeping cabin. The proposed sleeping cabin does not require a variance from the development permit bylaw and is permitted to be constructed only re requiring a building permit. So we can see here some of the shoreline. This is looking down from the dock area. Um, as is this photo. This is the existing dwelling. 
Um, and this rear side is where that proposed small increase in footprint. And we can see there is some topographic concerns with the property, um, which would be the reasoning for not being able to expand on the ground level. Staff is of the opinion that the retention of all existing vegetation on the remainder of the lot outside of the area of the proposed building envelope is recommended to assist in reducing potential negative impacts. It is also staff's opinion that the proposed development is in keeping with the size and frontage of the property. Therefore, staff have no concerns with the approval of this application subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Um, as we can see here, it is mostly consolidated from lake views. They've made the second story primarily to the rear of the dwelling. Um, so it will be less impactful on lake views. This would be the side view. Um, and this is what we would see if we were looking at it from that boathouse area. Um, the non-hatch space to the rear here would be the increase in footprint on the ground level. That is all that they're asking for on the ground level. And yeah, if, if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to assist. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, questions for Chloe? Not seeing any. Is there an agent or a owner wishes to speak? Or any further questions from the audience? Moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Brooks. Whereas Council for Planning Matters, Corporation Township Lake of Bays, hereby receives a staff report developed from application DP3423 LB Rule in Vosburgh, 1019 Arts Road, Rule number 4427010170 dated May 30th, 2023, and whereas the applicant have submitted developed for an application DP3423 LV rule in Vosburgh in order to facilitate the construction of an addition to an existing legal non-complying dwelling located within the shoreline activity area consisting of an increase in footprint of 15 square meters, 161.45 square feet, resulting in a reduced interior side yard setback, as well as an addition to a second story resulting in a height greater than existing. The applicants also request approval for the construction of 41 square meter, 441.32 square foot sleeping cabin to the rear of the existing dwelling. And whereas relief from the following sections of bylaw number 04180 is required to permit the proposed construction. The requirements, section 4.39, expansion of a legal non-complying building or structure having a height increase of more than 15% existing building or structure. Uh, the existing legal non-complying dwelling with a height of 5.13 meters, 16.8 feet, and it's to permit the expansion of legal non-complying dwelling resulting in a height of 8.45 meters, 27.7 feet being two, uh, sorry, 3.32 meters, 10.9 feet or 65% greater than existing. Section 5.1.1 minimum interior side yard setback, 4.5 meters, 14.7 feet, the existing interior side yard setback of 4.5 meters, 14.7 feet to an existing legal non-complying dwelling proposed minimum interior side yard setback of 3.8 meters, 12.4 feet to a proposed addition to an existing legal non-complying dwelling. Now be it resolved that Council for Planning Matters, the Corporation Township Legal Base provisionally approves this application pending the receipt and approval of to the satisfaction of the Township the following. Confirmation of septic capacity to the satisfaction of the building department. Planting plan to revegetate the shoreline side yard near proposed dwelling addition with native trees and shrubs. Upon receipt of the above criteria as outlined schedule C, the development from bylaw would therefore be fulfilled and council would hereby approve the subject proposal in accordance with attached schedule A, subject to the following conditions that works be carried out in accordance with the plan submitted March 21st, 2023 and Mark DP 3423 LOB. That all lighting facilities shall be directed downwards to be required to minimize the impacts of lake views, neighboring properties, night skies, and environmental features. That on a property adjacent to water, a shoreline buffer shall be maintained abutting any portion of the shoreline that does not form part of the shoreline activity area. If it is identified in the attached schedule, a shoreline buffer shall be a minimum of 15 meters, 49.2 feet, in depth, measured inland from the ordinary water's edge, unless otherwise specified. All other provisions of bylaw 04180 must be complied with. If an activity area is not identified, all shoreline vegetation shall be maintained. That the submitted planning plan be implemented. That all existing vegetation on the remainder of the lot outside of the areas of proposed building envelope is scheduled A as a date of passing of this resolution be retained. Council, questions, comments, all those in favor? It's carried, thank you. 
Okay. We're into section 41 agreements, section 5126 agreements. Sorry. I still have to read that part, right? If there's nothing further, I declare the public portion of the meeting to be concluded. We will now move on to other matters on the agenda. Any members of the public who wish to speak of these matters have requested to be delegation prior to the meeting. First up, proposed provincial planning statement 2023 and bill 97, helping home buyers protect tenants act 2023 and associated regulations. April. Thank you, Mark Glover. So as council is likely aware, there's a lot of changes coming uh, to planning legislation from the province. So uh, brought a staff report forward just to give you an update on that, as well as some conditions that we're proposing to be forwarding to the province as part of these new changes. So I'll give you a quick synopsis. Um, on April 6th of this year, the province of Ontario announced the most recent round of policy and legislative changes as part of its housing supply action plan. This latest action builds upon the province's past related efforts uh, with Bill 108, 109, and 23. So key elements of the most recent announcement are the introduction of Bill 97, the Helping Home Buyers Protecting Tenants Act, associated regulations, as well as the release of a draft of a new policy document entitled the Provincial Planning Statement. Uh, so this new policy document is intended to replace the current provincial policy statement and as well as the uh, Places to Grow Act or the Growth Plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. So really consolidating those two, uh, those two documents from a provincial level. Uh, so an environmental registry posting on all these changes have been made, which are seeking public feedback. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, so given the interconnected nature of these legislative and policy changes, comments on these proposed changes have been combined into a joint submission from the District of Muskoka, as well as all the area municipalities within it. The joint comments are attached to my staff report as uh, Appendix A. I won't read them all, but I can give you, or if you have any questions, essentially, I can, I can answer them. Um, but of critical interest and importance to land use planning across Muskoka are the natural heritage policies of the provincial planning statement. So this section has not yet been released. And uh, as part of our comments to the province, I'm recommending that a request be forwarded to provide sufficient time, at least 90 days, for meaningful consultation on these proposed revisions to the natural heritage policies. Uh, in summary, staff recommend that the staff report and joint comments attached as Appendix A be submitted to the province in response to its request for feedback. Staff will continue to keep council up to date on these initiatives uh, as we become aware of them. But again, I'm here to answer any questions uh, at this time. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much for the report, April. I appreciate that. Um, Councillor Papard, you brought this up at district. I don't know if you want to make a further comment. You were concerned that we were going to, I guess, comment. And, and of course we have, but uh, go ahead, sir. Did you want to say anything? Yeah, April 3, Mr. Mayor. I was concerned that we're in this um, void between getting the CPPS passed and we're asking the province to respect um, the site plan control. So, but we weren't on the list to request that. Are we going to put ourselves on the list just to be certain, or do you think that the CPPS will be passed in the next two weeks or something like that? Hey, Mike Glover, that is a good question. So, when it comes to the CPP bylaw, as you know, we wouldn't need site plan control anymore. Um, the idea is that we're hoping to get that implemented. Um, and for that short period of time, we have now implemented planting agreements, which we got delegated authority to deal with. So, staff are of the opinion that that can also encapsulate, um, you know, shoreline vegetation or any of those sorts of things in the interim until our CPPS bylaws in force. And then I have a supplementary big long one. I don't even know if you want to try it, but um, a lot of the professional gossip around um, the protection of natural heritage features is they're going to remove the P remove it from the PPS completely, and our official plan constantly refers back to the PPPS. Is there an opportunity for any municipality to then revise its official plan so it no longer refers to the PPS, which may be non-existent, and just say we want to protect these natural heritage features and areas using these laws? Big speculation. I'm just wondering what happens if all goes really badly. What are our choices around trying to protect natural heritage features? How can he battle back the man? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think you're understand I'm understanding your question is that if it gets removed entirely from this. Um, so again, we don't know what they're they're proposing to do, so I can't speak too much to that. Um, but as you know, Lake of Bays, we our official plan does speak to a lot of our natural heritage um, concerns or protection of that, and we are going through our official plan review next year. So we should hopefully know um, and you know, by the end of this year, what direction that uh, provincial planning statement is going to take, yep. and then we can also adjust if we need to as well. 
But thank you, Councilor Papard, for being on this. It's important that we follow through to protect our environment and heritage features. Very important. Further questions, Council? Moved by Councilor Tapley, seconded by Councilor Papard, whereas the Council of Corporation and Township of Liga Bays hereby receives a staff report proposed provincial planning statement 2023, Bill 97, helping homebuyers protecting Tenants Act 2023 and associated regulations dated May 30th, 2023. Be resolved that council direct staff to submit this report as well as a joint comments to the district municipality of Muskoka and six area municipalities. The staff attached is Appendix A to the staff report to the province as part of the province's ongoing review of planning policy and legislation. And further, that a request by for be forwarded to the province of Ontario to provide sufficient time, at least 90 days, for meaningful consultation on proposed revisions to the natural heritage policies of the Provincial Planning Statement 2023. Anything further? Councillor Tapley. Oh, thank you. I just want to say thank you for the comments you provided. I thought they were really right on point. Okay, all further, any, uh, uh, sorry, all those in favor? Ms. Carried. thank you. Okay, this, do we get any communication items? Is that where I am or did I jump in? No. Uh, no notice of motion, but we will be going into closed session. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, um, and uh, shortly we'll be going into closed session and it is uh, Litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, Lang Mace OLT matters. Oh, okay, yeah. Moved by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Brooks, be resolved in accordance with section 23912 and 3.1 of the Municipal Act C25 SO 2001 as amended. The Council Corporation Township Liquor Base will convene in closed session at 1146. That's an AM. We go for discussion regarding litigation, potential litigation, cleaning matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, Langmates, OLT matters. All those in favor. And it's carried. So you tell us when we're enclosed and
Okay, thank you very much. We're coming back out of uh, closed session. I have moved by Councillor Brooks, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Be resolved the Council Corporation Township of Lake Bay's reconvene at 1157 a.m. in open session and report on matters discussed in closed session. All those in favor? It's carried. Thank you. And then I have a bylaw. Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the meeting of council planning matters held on May 30th, 2023, pursuant to Section 8, Municipal Act C25SO 2001, the Corporation of the Township of Lake Bays has the capacity, rights, powers, and privileges of a natural person for the purposes of exercising its authority under this or any act, whereas pursuant to Section 5.3 of the Municipal Act C25SO 2001, the Corporation of the Township of Lake of Bay's power, including its capacity, rights, powers, and privileges under Section 8, it shall be exercised by bylaw unless specifically authorized to do otherwise. And whereas it's deemed expedient that proceedings of the Council of Planning Matters of the Corporation of Township of Lake of Bay is here, here and set forth be confirmed and adopted by bylaw. Now, therefore, the Council of Planning Matters of Corporation of Township of Lake Bays hereby enacts as follows that the actions of the Council for Planning Matters of the Corporation of Township of Lake Bays at its meeting held on May 30th, 2023, in respect to each recommendation contained in the report of the standing and special committees as adopted or amended in, in, in respect to each motion and resolution passed and taken by the Council for Planning Matters of this meeting is hereby adopted and confirmed as all such proceedings were expressed embodied in the bylaw. The chair and proper officials of the corporation and the township of Lake Bays are hereby authorized and directed to do all the things necessary to give effect to the actions of the Council for Planning Matters of the corporation of the township of Lake Bays referred to in the preceding section thereof. The mayor and clerk are authorized and directed to execute all documents necessary in the capacity and to affix there thereto the seal of the corporation of the township of Lake Bays. Section one does not apply to any action or matter that is required by the bylaw to be done by resolution. Section one does not apply to any action or matter to which local planning appeal tribunal approval is required until such approval is obtained. But section two applies for the purpose of obtaining such approval. Read and pass this 30th day of May, 2023. All those in favor? It's carried. Moved by Councilor Goddard, seconded by Councilor Bard. Be resolved the Council Corporation Township of Lake Bay hereby adjourns at 11.59 a.m. to meet again on June 6, 2023 in a hybrid meeting setting. All those in favor? It's carried. Thank you. That's it, right? Thank you very much for joining us. Everybody have a safe day. Enjoy that beautiful weather. Bye for now. Take care of yourself.